consultation and uh, we are really excited that we can sit down together and see what areas of collaboration we can work on. Uh, briefly, let me just uh, share what God is doing. First, uh, allow me to start with the PMA vision. Uh, we have actually revised it and this is the new one. We see every Filipino church working together in the discipleship of all nations. We want to really see that all churches uh, in the Philippines will really be engaged in this. And this is the mission of a PMA. PMA exists to encourage and enable Filipinos for cross-cultural disciple-making movements. So you will notice that the focus really now is discipleship. So we, we believe that as we disciple Filipinos, we would be able to see, as a result, churches planted. Uh, of course, uh, same culture uh, church planting. We will have also cross-cultural church planting, but we will also see cross-cultural uh, unreached uh, churches planted uh, among the unreached people in the Philippines. Uh, last uh, Saturday, we were in Iligan City, and we were so excited to do mobilization work. We have uh, more than 200, around 250 who participated. These are pastors and leaders from uh, Iligan, Marawi, and Lano area. And it's actually a move to really uh, get the churches and believers engaged, uh, especially in reaching Muslims uh, in the South. Uh, because uh, of the Marawi seeds, there are a lot of open doors. And in fact, thousands of Muslims came to Christ as a result of the various ministries. And, and like Bishop Noel was saying, there were relief operations. And the Muslims were asking those who were helping, why are you here? Who are you? And they said, we are Christians, but we love Muslims. Uh, Isa, Jesus told us to come and help you. So the Muslims said, if Isa told you to come and help us, then you are welcome. And of course, in the course of, you know, helps and counseling, they would ask, how did Jesus tell you, you know? And it starts conversation, and as a result, uh, we are seeing response to the gospel. So we really are now into uh, engaging more believers in the area of discipleship. And we thank God for disciple-making movement where we have new strategies to equip God's people to be involved in not just making disciples but multiplying disciples and uh, especially among the unreached peoples. Uh, three, three years ago, we, we uh, had a general assembly and the theme was making the Great Commission a great completion in the Philippines and beyond. Uh, the focus before was more on OFWs but uh, three years ago, we began to balance it. You know, we, we also would want to see all the 13 uh, unreached Muslim people groups reached with the gospel. And the following year, we, uh, the theme was optimizing synergy to complete the Great Commission in the Philippines and beyond. And stronger partnerships took place. And uh, this year is accelerating the, the completion of the Great Commission in the Philippines and beyond. And I believe this consultation, uh, this, this conference that we are doing today is really and would play a significant you know, uh, impact in terms of accelerating the work because as Bishop Noel said, about 60% uh, of those missionaries applying every month are Koreans and, and uh, we believe that you are the greatest missionary force that we can work with if we would like to really see the discipleship of the nation. Well, uh, maybe it's really good for us to be encouraged by what the Lord is doing. Um, so briefly, let me share uh, it had been reported that about 150 to 180,000 people are receiving Christ every day all over the world. And uh, this should really encourage us to equip more people. Uh, and later we'll talk about collaboration. But there is really a need to equip more people to be engaged in the harvest so that we would be able to saturate the nation and even beyond with the gospel. Uh, it had been reported that China had, you know, uh, that Christianity had really grown so fast in China, and now it's about 10 to 25,000 people receiving Christ every day. Uh, in, in fact, uh, movements are taking place, and uh, it had been reported that in Henan, China, Henan province, which is 
the most evangelized province in China, according to Operation World, they grew from 1 to 5 million in just a span of 8 years. Uh, below, you can see that in southern China, a disciple-making movement produced more than 1 million baptized believers in 100,000 house churches in just a span of 12 years. So we can see that God is moving and really at work in the Chinese world. Uh, and, and we also are uh, thankful that even in the Muslim world, God is working. This was the report, the latest from the U.S. Center for World Missions. And they said that 70,000 uh, 70, new house churches were planted in the last few years. And in fact, over 15,000 of the population of Indonesia are Christian. So uh, percentage-wise, there are more Christians in Indonesia than in the Philippines. And that's a tremendous challenge for us. So we need to partner together so we can increase the number of evangelical Christians in the Philippines. We're just in the 10.3% as of last year. And uh, reports and data are being consolidated now so that uh, we're thinking of, and please mark this, uh, if you are available, 23 and 24 of November, we'll be doing a church planting summit in Tagaytay. November 23 and 24. So it would be lunch of 23 to the lunch of November 24. So you are invited, but that would be a time where we will be giving updates about uh, the new data that we have on church planting. And uh, we also need your help because we may not be counting the churches that you were planting. You know, like I was uh, uh, talking with Brother Kim uh, earlier in Jollibee during breakfast, uh, and I was asking how many churches have you planted? 47? Yeah, 47 churches already just in his group. So I don't know if, if this is part of those that were counted in the 72,000. So we, we need to, to hear from you and uh, maybe we'll also give you some questionnaire where we would be able uh, to get those data or information so that we can consolidate uh, the churches planted. So uh, for example, if they ask, how many churches uh, did the Koreans contribute to the Philippines? So right there and there we have the data. So we, we, would, we would appreciate if we can work on that uh, so that we would be able to fast track, uh, especially, you know, uh, church planting uh, and disciple making movement in the country. Well, uh, what is interesting here is the last paragraph. It says that the government of Indonesia was so concerned that they stopped counting Christian growth. We want that to happen in the Philippines. <laughs> Of course, that uh, evangelical Christianity will grow even, even more. And more uh, of the unreached peoples will come to know Christ. So God is just working in an amazing way in Indonesia. In fact, they were saying that if the present trend of conversion will continue, in 30 years, the whole of Indonesia will become Christ followers. So God is just is really on the move. In Iran, it had been reported uh, in, 20, in, in 1979, there were only 500 non-believers. 2016, over a million. Today, they estimate, because of the disciple-making movement, over 2 million Muslim background believers. So again, God is working, not just in uh, the Chinese world, uh, but even in the Muslim world. Uh, a disciple-making movement was supported in Jordan, and uh, they said in just a span of 18 months, one and a half year, 8,000 Muslims were baptized. So God is really working in an amazing way. And when Patrick Johnson was here three months ago, he said that all the crisis that's happening in the world today, you will notice most of them are in Muslim areas. And this is, uh, he believed, God's hand at work because of these displacements are happening. And when they are displaced and when they are in crisis, they become more responsive to the gospel. So in, in, in Jordan, for example, there are not now a lot of Iraqi churches because of you know, the, the crisis in Iraq before, during the Gulf War. Uh, now there are a lot of uh, Syrians responding to the gospel in Lebanon you know, because of the crisis in Syria. More than 50,000 Syrians are now in Lebanon uh, as refugees. So all of these are just open doors for uh, the the Muslims to become more open to the gospel. So movements are happening all over the world. In fact, in 2013, they said there are 69 movements already happening. Uh, to date, uh, this is of course just for Muslims, but to date, uh, the latest is that there are about 650 movements. Uh, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindus, 
uh, animes, uh, unreligious uh, movements happening, 650 movements all over the world. And this is uh, actually uh, saying about 50 million new believers. No? So 50 million new believers in uh, 650 movements. So God is just working. In fact, the U.S. Center for World Missions reported that the Christianity now, Christ followers, is the fastest growing religion in the world. 2.6% per annum. We're uh, growing faster than Islam. We're growing twice as much as Hinduism and Buddhism. This should encourage us. And uh, encourage us to even uh, do more and join God in what He's doing. Uh, for example, uh, a report was given in Asia. In, this is actually, Bootspur is actually in, Indo, in, in India. And they reported that in just 20 years, 80,000 new churches were planted and 4 million new believers were saved. And this is just within a span of 20 years. So happening and disciple-making movement is happening. And we want to multiply this also in the Philippines. We want discipleship taking place. Because as we disciple, more are being discipled. This will result in church growth and church planting. We don't want to see more churches without more believers. Because uh, one of the challenges we have now in church planting is we are adding churches, but they are from other churches also. You know? So uh, we, we don't want that. We, we want new believers. And that's the very essence why we focus more on discipling the nation. Uh, and of course, churches will just be the result. Reports in Africa, God is also doing wonders. Uh, this is very interesting. The ratio of Christians with unbelievers. In 8100, one Christian should share the gospel to 360 people. In 8500, one Christian should share to, 100, uh, to just 85 people. And today, it's only 1.7. So just, uh, just round it up to 1 to 8. In other words, this is telling that if every Christian will just be trained and equipped to share the gospel, and everyone will just share the gospel to 8 people, everyone on planet Earth will hear the gospel. So it's, uh, it's a difficult job because few are doing it. But if every believer will do it, it would be an easy task. We ask you to help us and let's partner together to equip the Philippine church in the area of evangelism and discipleship. Uh, and I, I know you have a lot of Bible college uh, schools also and training centers. Uh, we, we want to know where they are located. We want to know what courses do you offer. So we can also promote it and we can also you know, maximize those facilities. We may, we may uh, talk about collaboration in doing mobilization or trainings you know, in your respective areas. So we would love to do that uh, in partnership with you. Well, uh, it's also interesting, uh, the U.S. Center and uh, Joshua Project gave these figures, the uh, number of Christian churches and the ratio to unreached people groups. So before, uh, yeah, this is a, one, one, one uh, Christian church, uh, it should be one is to 12, sorry. One Christian church should be sharing the gospel to 12 unreached people groups. So that's difficult, you know. Uh, if, if one church will reach out to uh, like the Maranao, the Maginanao, 12, 12 UPGs. Uh, today, uh, in 1500, it was one is to one actually. One church to one UPG. Today, it's 1,000 churches to one unreached people groups. So looking at the Philippine context, if there are 72,000, you divide that by 14 Muslim people groups, that's 5,000 churches to one. So we're saying if only, and in fact, that's why we are now, PMA is now advocating for people group adoption. We want every church in the Philippines possibly to adopt an unreached people group. So, for example, if 5,000 churches will put their resources together and focus on praying and reaching out to the Maranaos, it would be easy. You know, 5,000 churches will work together to reach out to the Maginanaos, the task will be easy. Well, uh, globally, it's 1,000 churches to one. That's why the U.S. Center for World Mission said the church has 20 times the resources needed to complete the task. We have so much resources. The problem is resources are misallocated. They are not focused on unreached peoples. Most resources are focused on rich people group already. So uh, maybe we can work on this and collaborate so that we would be able to really see 
uh, more churches planted, uh, of course, as a result of more people coming to Christ. So areas of collaboration, uh, Bishop Noel also talked about already about the Philippines Vision 120 by 2020. And uh, of course, the, 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 we're trusting the Lord for 120,000 churches then by the end of 2020. Now, uh, we have actually thought of 10 areas of mobilization. Uh, of course, uh, if, if you look there, first is the churches. So we need your help also in mobilizing churches. Uh, so we can see more engaged in uh, planting churches, not only among rich people group, but the greatest challenge in the church planting uh, program now is the unreached peoples. So Bishop uh, reported earlier that there are 42,000 barangays in the Philippines. The 72,000 churches are only situated in the 22,000 barangays, meaning 20,000 barangays does not have one single evangelical church. Think about that. 20,000 barangays, no single evangelical church. And uh, what are these? If you look at the profile, these are Muslim communities, these are uh, poor and depressed communities, and these are Catholic, uh, diehard Catholic communities. So if there are uh, efforts or focus that should be done, is how can we strategize so that we would be able to, to focus more on the poor and depressed areas and I believe Dr. Lee will be talking about that, you know, because Aztecs is really into community development and uh, establishing of cooperatives so that we are able to address those poor and depressed communities. And as they come to know Christ, they are also growing economically. And then, of course, uh, these 20,000 20, unreached people, uh, I mean barangays, the Muslims are, are there. You know? So 25 million estimated living in the 20,000 barangays. Uh, if, if Muslims are about 11, they, they, they claim to be 11 to 12 million, meaning about half of those in unchurched barangays are Muslims. So how can we strategize and work together so that we would be able to see more churches planted among the Maranaos, the Maguindanaos, the, 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 the Muslim people group? And mind you, we don't have to go all, all of us go to Mindanao to reach out to the Muslims. Because they are all over now. You go to Pangasinan, a lot of Muslims. Go to Baguio, a lot of Muslims. Metro Manila alone, a lot of Muslims. So we just have to equip our churches how to be able to respond to the challenge. Uh, that's why Lusan is saying missions is from everywhere to everywhere. Because uh, now, again, they, uh, I mean, Muslims are all over. Go to uh, Green Hills, go to the Changi, and uh, you will see. Uh, a lot of uh, Muslims there. OFW diaspora, we want to mobilize that, our diaspora. The next generation, the youth, should be engaged. That's why we are now planting churches in campuses. Uh, one student was instrumental in Bicol University to plant eight student churches. One campus, eight student churches started by one student. We want to multiply churches like this, you know? So, because we believe church is not the building, it's not a location. It's not an institution, but a church is, the, is, is God's people. It's a movement. And therefore, we can actually have churches in all campuses, in, in military camps, in police stations, in call centers, you know, in, in businesses, wherever. So we can, we can claim all of these places and, and be able to really see churches established. Of course, uh, the mobilization of the lady business people, we have to, to mobilize them. Because we want every businesses, you know, uh, especially Christian business establishment, there will be churches planted there. We want to mobilize media and arts. We want to encourage seminaries also to, uh, re to revisit their curriculum. Because now it has been discovered that many Bible schools and seminaries have really been focusing on non-essentials. Look at their evangelism subjects and mission subjects and realize it's not even 10%. No wonder we have many graduates in seminaries and Bible schools, colleges that are not planting churches, that are not evangelizing, that are not making disciples. So we're challenging seminaries and Bible schools to revisit their vision, mission. Christian NGOs must also be mobilized so that we would be able to maximize, you know, using uh, during calamities like what happened in Marawi, if our uh, guys that are involved in doing relief operations 
are trained to do uh, evangelism and cross-cultural evangelism for that matter. They are able to communicate the gospel even to Muslims as they serve them. So it's not just giving relief goods, but it's really equipping these guys giving so that as they give, they are able to communicate why they do what they are doing. Mobilizing prayer networks, mobilizing ministerial fellowships. The task is still great. We need your help. You have influence in your, your respective areas. Help us organize the ministerial fellowships Let, so we can cast the vision of planting churches, working together, and, and uh, just, just uh, seeing this happen will, I believe, fast track uh, our church planting initiative. So these are some of the guys that are involved, the many uh, actually uh, vision casting events that we did in various parts of the country. Uh, of course, uh, Bishop Noel and I were in uh, many places, and uh, we are just so excited to see how churches are responding. No? Even in Bindana, we have 350 in Butuan, uh, 350 in Kagian, 450 in Dipolog, and uh, God is just working amazingly. This coming September 6th, we will be in Lawag. Uh, so if you have contacts, anybody that uh, have contacts or ministries there uh, in the north, we are calling the pastors there. This is the venue, Bethel Central Church, and we're really excited uh, that the ministerial fellowship in uh, Lawag is uh, uh, helping us in this. Uh, we have, of course, ministries with major religious blocks. Uh, if you go to Dabao now, uh, I, I, we were told we, there were uh, some of you are from India now. Anybody from Dabao? Uh, nobody from Dabao? Uh, what, what, what places in India? Ah, okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, on the way. Yeah. But you know, in Dabao City alone, and, and we have, you know, we have a lot of Koreans there. We, we would like to partner with them, really. In Dabao City alone, there are more than 9,000. Last year, only 6,000 Indian medical students. They come to Dabao to medical school and other medical schools in Dabao. They, they study medicine. So we're challenging our churches in Dabao. You know, God is bringing the Hindus here. 90% of them are Hindus. We don't have to go to India to reach out to them, but we just have to mobilize our churches to reach out to the Indians. And uh, this is very strategic because they would be doctors. And you, you just you know, we're, we're telling churches in Dabao, if we reach out to them, we disciple them, we train and equip them, they can be sent back you know, to their own people as our missionaries. So you know, this is God's way for them, I believe, to be trained and equipped. So we're doing a lot of forums uh, here at, in, in Dabao. In fact, I'm going there this weekend again. So we will be having more meetings and uh, uh, do that. And then, of course, here in Las Piñas, uh, if you're working in Las Piñas, Montilupa area, in Perpetual Health University, there are more than 2,000 Indian medical students as well. Of course, besides Nepali and South Asians that are there. So tre tremendous challenge uh, ahead of us. We cannot do the task alone, PMA. <laughs> we need partners. Yeah? Uh, we, we need partners to help us in this. Uh, we had been conducting a, a forum also to reach out to, to Buddhists and, and unreligious. May, uh, a lot from China. Uh, estimated over a million are now in the Philippines, from mainland China. So we need more churches uh, to respond. We need your help if you are you know, influential in some areas or it, uh, be able to influence some churches that are uh, that may be involved, you know, in reaching uh, the Chinese uh, in the Philippines. So they are here to make to do business, but we can also do God's business uh, with them as they uh, do their their uh, businesses. Um, of course, uh, we have been doing uh, a lot of uh, con conferences uh, for uh, unreached peoples. Now, these are the 14 Muslim people groups, actually. I can give you a copy of the PowerPoint so that you will have those very important information. Uh, but I would like to share this with you. This is a very big challenge for us. In 2010, you will notice there, in, in 2010, uh, this is NSO, National Statistics Office, there are only 105,000 Muslims in, the, in Metro Manila. Now, you know what happened? In 2014, only a span of four years, there are now 1.1 million. In other words, 1 million migration to Metro Manila in a span of four years. So today it is believed that there, are, there could be 2 million Muslims now 
in Metro Manila. You fly from any part of Mindanao to Manila, you will be amazed. About half of the, of the passengers are Muslims. So they have migrated here. So again, we don't have to go to, go to Mindanao to reach out to them. They are here. In fact, there are now more than 100 mosques uh, in Metro Manila alone. More than 100 mosques. And what is exciting, there are breakthroughs happening even in Taguig, in Maharlika. And we're seeing even our students that are being discipled. These are uh, college students and they are now baptizing their, their parents, their siblings. And, and, and God is just amaz doing amazing things. So a, a lot of things are happening. Uh, the greatest challenge is that the Banks of Moro Organic Law had already been uh, signed. And you, you know, if, if ever it will be in full implementation, it may mean but, but by, that by 2022, it will now be against the law to share the gospel in those areas. So we have a five-year window. What should we do? We have to train and equip our churches in the Banks of Moro area so that if, if that would happen, these MBBs, Muslim background believers, Muslims who came to know Christ and be disciples will be instrumental to reach their own people. This is why Christianity grew in China because they were trained and equipped uh, and it, when communists took over, the church were ready. They were prepared. So we, we, we would love to, to have uh, you partner with us in these areas. Of course, in the area of prayer, in the area of... Uh, yeah, we, we have been doing a lot of prayer mobilization and we know that Koreans are really good in prayer. We, we, need, to, we need your help. How can we, we, we make the most of the prayer uh, gatherings that we are doing? No? And, and even uh, how can we, we maximize the dawn prayer or, or things like that? But we need to really see prayer uh, mobilization taking place as well. And we have been doing a specific mobilization. For example, Malaysia, uh, we have sent uh, many, uh, recently, many missionaries because uh, a lot of focus are being done in Malaysia, especially the Sabah area. Uh, it had been reported that there are uh, uh, only about half a million Filipinos undocumented, but actually, unofficially, according to Al Jazeera and our embassy in Kuala Lumpur, there could be 1.5 to 2 million undocumented Filipinos. And they are so open to the gospel uh, because they are illegally staying in, in uh, especially in the Sabah region. So we have been mobilizing churches and uh, we have sent uh, several missionaries lately and have been doing many forums actually. Uh, many other uh, uh, initiatives like Bless Japan, we recently, we sent several uh, missionaries long term in Japan. We just started mobilizing even for Central Asia. Uh, and recently, we, we sent missionaries in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and Dostan, Tan Tan. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're doing Bless Japan again uh, in, uh, in the Bao on the October 27, October 20, actually, here in Manila. And then we're doing general mobilization also. So many events in partnership with other groups. Of course, with uh, Dr. Elijah Kim, we did that uh, also. Uh, and, and many other different organizations, just partnering with them so that we are able to see more general mobilization taking place. And uh, last month, uh, we were in Antique and Iloilo doing um, uh, missions mobilization. And this is the event last week when we were in uh, Iligan. And next week, Bishop and I will be in uh, Baguio City. Uh, Baguio, we will be doing mobilization work, vision casting for the church planting initiative, plus uh, also advocating for people group adoption in the, in, 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 in the area. So uh, please pray with us. And if you are in Baguio, we would appreciate if you can uh, take, take part of what God is doing. We are doing a lot of trainings. We want to partner with you also. Uh, so that we would be able to see more uh, of the churches or Filipinos trained and equipped. So I think these are all uh, areas where we can and we need to collaborate uh, so that we would be able to pass track uh, mobilization of the Philippine church, training and equipping them, and also actually 
uh, seeing more churches as a, re as a result planted, but more importantly, a rich people group, rich with the gospel, and more Filipinos sent out to be missionaries in different parts of the world. And thank you also for the partnership we had with Paul Mission. We had been doing uh, several batches of trainings, several trainings. We, we want uh, more of this, actually. You know, of course, uh, uh, many other trainings that we did, mobilizing OFWs uh, so that uh, we can uh, pass the completion of the Great Commission. So anyway, a lot of things are happening. But I believe more can be done if we work in partnership. So I'm very much excited uh, that we can have this consultation and that we would be able to really begin talking together uh, even more and, and more cooperation in the days ahead. Uh, God bless you.